Right, welcome sports fans. Welcome to another blustery uh, day at Teesside. Wish it was a bit more blustery on the transfer market front, but we'll get into that slightly. Um, have a little have a little conversation about what we've done, what we haven't done. I'm Foxy. Hope you guys know that by now. This is the preview review show. We're not going to talk much about Bristol City because we guess we've all seen it. We've, we've, we've heard about it. We've read it. We, we, we know where we're at with that. Um, I'm with Rob as always. So good evening, Rob. Yes, I am. Um, I don't know if I should touch on another one of Rob's sets here or not. Massive wind machine on the side that you can't see. And Rob's actually got his daughter in the day using the shower nozzle to give us the effective rain. How we put that together is just another one of those magical secrets for TV. But, like I say, this is not a comedy show. Let's move on to sports. Bristol City. We did what we had to do. Uh, really, five billion first goal. Passing, movement, energy. Everybody sort of looking like they know what they're doing, organised. Second goal was, was half decent too, but we did what we needed to do. I don't think Bristol City were the team that we, that we, that we expected they were going to be. Um, we've kind of played a few teams, Chef United, Millwall I'll leave out of it, Chef United um, and Bristol City that haven't kind of lived up to billing from last year. Looks like we're going to the new Bristol City this season from the, from the results that they've had so far. Maybe even Bolton, who knows. Get tuning in though, uh, other football fans from wherever you are. I know we always say this, but it's about every fan. We want everybody's opinion. All local Borough fans are the core. We want to know from other clubs uh, what you think and, 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 and your thoughts on your season and ours. So, without getting sidetracked, let's just move straight on. Bristol City, like I say, good performance. We sat back, we did what we needed to do. Second half, last 30 minutes or so, um, they were unlucky. I'll be honest, they hit the woodwork a few times, but I think we'd already done the, done the job by that. Braithwaite again, another impressive performance. Stewie Downing again started the season uh, really well. And it was another good sort of uh, performance him, another assist. Can't argue with what they're putting in at the moment, these guys. No one's denying that the first 11's a decent setup, but we just don't have to strengthen numbers. And we all know how tough a league this is. It's a total endurance test, this league. Um, we're guaranteed to get injuries and we're guaranteed to get suspensions, unfortunately. And obviously, when you're at the top of the table, teams want to come and put that extra foot in. So there's no way in the world we're going to get through a season with 15 squad players, 15 people. So, that kind of brings me nicely to a little bit of transfer news that we've got today. You probably all know that Bessie just signed. The last he went to Villa last night, watched the game. Um, he's not coming to us. For some reason, he doesn't want to be in, in, in the area. We don't know what that is. And we're not here just to make sort of um, accusations or, or, or make things up. We're a factual show. We believe he doesn't want to move, move this far up north uh, for whatever reason that is. Maybe it's a family thing. You can understand that. Um, you know, it's a big move. Um, but the guy would have definitely got his career back on track here, which is a shame. So I wish him all well at Villa. I'm not going to be... A, 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 a I'm not, going to be, I'm not going to be just nasty for the sake of it. That's not what, what, what I do. That's not my remit. But the fit Blassie would have been a great addition. We've heard a day that Punchin's still on the cards, maybe. We haven't heard any more about Braithwaite staying or going. We'd like to think that he's going to stay, especially in the current climate now. But Bessie's is a done deal. So let's hope we can get a few more through the door. Pulis is working his, his heart out to try and do that. So let's hope we can get a few more through the door before... Well, it's not going to happen before tomorrow night, but definitely before the Leeds game. So that takes us on to West Brom tomorrow night. Or, or, or tonight, whenever you're watching this, guys. West Brom. So it's a strange one with West Brom. So um, where do I start with West Brom? Well, let's start at the top. So they opened up, they opened up the season with a 2-1 defeat at home at Bolton. No one was expecting that. That ruined everybody's coup on that day. Uh, then they went to Forest and got a really respectable draw with, with you know, with as, as we build not in the Forest before the start of the season to have a really good squad and up, be up there with ourselves, we'd like to think. Um, so that was a good point. Then they've gone away to Norwich, scored four, conceded three. And then everybody, everybody obviously knows about the uh, QPR result last Saturday, 7-1. I think just to highlight that point, put it in context, I think QPR were as bad as they were going forward. QPR were appalling this season. I mentioned it on Monday the other night. Steve McLaren, it's a shame in a way, but also he's kind of been found out. The guy's a very poor man manager from what we from 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 sources, people that I've spoken to, and he just doesn't man manage very well. Brilliant coach, excellent on the trading pitch, but not a very good man manager. And obviously QPR. They took a battering. So, where does that leave West Brom kind of thing? What sort of team are they? Well, ironically, when they came down last season, they give Darren Moore the job, who was assistant coach, to Tony Pulis. 
So actually, Tony Pulis knows a hell of a lot about this team. They haven't really made any real additions apart from Dwight Gale um, and, and, and Barnes as well, who I'll talk about a little bit in a minute, who's coming on loan from Leicester, who looks a really good player, under 20, England, England under 20 international. But this is a team Pulis knows inside out. He knows Darren Moore inside out and he knows how they play inside out. So Darren Moore, when he took over last season, the last five games, six games, I think it was, he tightened them up. He made them a lot, we consolidated him, we made them really out of the beat, and that's what gave him the job. They didn't concede many, but obviously they came down, they couldn't score many either. Now, this season, they conceded and scoring. So it's kind of as if they've took a step backwards. They like to play, um, however you look at it, it's a 3-5-2 or a 4-4-2, depending on where they are. I think tomorrow they'll play a 4-4-2 with Dwight Gale and Jay Rodriguez. Jay Rodriguez leading the line and Dwight Gale just behind him. I'll go into that slightly in a second, but as I was saying with Darren Moore, they kind of changed, they've kind of changed where they were at at the end of last season. They haven't really improved. So is that just the championship? Is that just what the championship does? It makes fodder of most teams coming down. You think you're going to keep a clean sheet and then you end up getting, you end up conceding three. But like I say, they are scoring goals, which is something they couldn't do last season. So they've kind of got it right at one end and wrong at the other again. But as I said, the 7-1, everybody got on the score sheet. So we'll kind of highlight that. Jay Rodriguez, top scorer for them this season. Four goals already. F fantastic player when he wants to be, when he's fit. Um, you know, the guy was boarded on an England cap just before he got his injury. Excellent, excellent technique on the guy. He can score from all angles. You know what? And you may, this may be a comment that people don't like, but he reminds me of Bamford. I think he's a better player than Bamford. But he's not, got, he's not very pacey, but he's intelligent. He can use both feet. He can score with his head. Clever in the box. Clever outside the box. Um, but like I say, I'd say Rodriguez has got bit more talent than Bamford, but it's a similar type of player. What they'll do is, generally speaking, at home they'll play a 3-5-2. Um, Sam Johnston in goal, who's from Man United, really good keeper, ex-Man United. Hagazi, centre-back through the middle. And then they'll play with Brunt, who's played in a centre midfield role this season, as opposed to playing out wide, which he got found out quite a lot in the Premiership, I felt. Uh, lost his pace, but been a really good servant for them. And also... Um, he, he's kind of your, your, he, he's your, he's your holding midfielder. Um, and then out wide, we're going to have Phillips, we're going to have Gibbs, and then Gale just in behind, um, just in behind Rodriguez, I, I, I would imagine. They'll probably play another holding midfielder in there. Um, could, it could vary who they play, but also Barnes will slot in there as well as an attacking midfield role. What I like about this team is that they aren't scared to go forward. Now, we all know if that was a Tony Pulis team, we would have sat back as we did. We wouldn't have gone for seven, six, five, four. But they didn't. I like that. I, I like that about them. If you're going to score goals, if you're going to concede goals, you need to score plenty in this league. And they have got fight, firepower. As I've mentioned, Jay Rodriguez, Dwight Gale, who's been a, who's a great signing for me, especially in this league. We saw what he could do for Newcastle in this league. Dwight Gale, Harvey Barnes in the centre. Uh, like I say, a 20-year-old kid, really talented player, likes to run with the ball. Um, the fans there are really sort of optimistic about him. They say that he's the best, in, the best sort of number 10 uh, or false number 9 that they've had for a long, long time. Going back to 30 years from what I'm reading. Um, but like I say, he's on low, but he's, he's a talented kid, likes to run, as I say, likes to dribble, likes to look for a pass, quite pacey, but he's kind of one of these players, and he's not, he's not, he's not as good as Traoré, so please don't write in fans, but he's one of these players that likes to beat four men three times when he doesn't really need to do that. He's already made the opportunity, sometimes doesn't give it. Maybe a bit of naive if he'd been his age, but that's something that you can work on. He's a talented guy. Phillips one side, who's not a natural uh, defender, he's more of a winger, but he's been played in that role as a full-back sometimes when they play that 3-5-2. Um, and also Gibbs on the other side, Kieran Gibbs. Now, for me, what I've noticed, even though they're scoring goals, they seem to concede a lot through, through on either flank. They really push up high. Um, that, for me, would be a match-up for us. That would be a, a position um, somewhere where I feel as if we can exploit them quite well. Downing, Braithwaite, getting in behind them, obviously Wing, Housen maybe as well, where we've got the ball pushing forward. And obviously at home, I, like, I think we're going to be on the front foot and really start, um, really start with a lot of impetus and, and, and kind of uh, physicality to our game, which is something that we, we're, really, we're really sort of strong on. No pun intended, guys. But I think if we get at them straight away and we push them back, um, we can get, we can we can kind of maybe we can use that to our advantage. I think the other thing with this game is it will be quite open because, like I say, they will they will go forward at every opportunity. So that'll work in our favour. I don't think they're going to come and sit there and, and kind of part the bush, whatever the phrase is. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to want to try and get three points. Um, although I know they'd be happy with a point. 
But as I say, flanks are important for us. Other key area for me uh, is, is going to be a Sombolonga against Azagi. He's shown in recent weeks a Sombolonga he can hold the ball up and he can use and he can use it and bring other people in. Agazi likes to be physical. He likes to win a lot of battles in the air. Obviously, Sombolonga's not brilliant in the air, but he's very physical. So that'll be a good matchup for me. The other one, as I mentioned, there's Harvey Barnes. Now, really, Clayton's got a job on his hands because Clayton's the man who's going to be picking him up, I would have thought, or Housen. Uh, but he's going to have a job on his hands because, like I say, this guy, this guy will always look to be tricky. So, also for me, with that, like I say, key areas, set pieces. They're not very good at defending set pieces. They're not very good at holding, a, 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 keeping a lead. Um, Norwich kind of exploited that a little bit with the four three. Norwich nearly won. It was it was it was give and take really with that game. Um, West Brom should have been out of sight the first half, and then Norwich really sort of pinned them back in the second half, and it could have it, it, it could have ended up being six five Norwich. But set piece is key, which we know we've worked on, which we know we can score goals on. So I think Flint will be important again. All in all. They've scored a lot of goals. We've scored goals. The difference is we're not conceded. Will they score? Well, QPR scored against them. You know, so there's no reason why we can't. QPR are probably the worst team I've seen this season. Genuinely, I, I, I don't think we've seen the worst team, Rob, have we? Birmingham have been bad, but QPR are diabolical. And they managed to score. So, without me kind of second-guessing, double-taking myself... What I thought was it'd probably end up nil-nil because -nil, we ain't conceding and they, 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 they do concede and they score plenty of goals. So I kind of thought it cancelled itself out. But what I think, realistically breaking it down, is I think we're looking at a 2-1-3-1 one, one borough. I'm going to go 2-1 borough. As, as usual, guys, it's all about you. Uh, we want your comments. We want to know what you think. doesn't matter what it's about, whatever the topic is. It could be anything to do with borough at all. So... Like, share, subscribe, the usual script, Twitter, uh, Facebook if you have to, YouTube. But like I say, keep tuning in. We've got plenty coming up. And also get an interview, guys. The guys will be outside Doc Brown's app before the game and they'll also be on Doc Road and, uh, after the game. You know the sketch, people. As always, it's a pleasure. I've been Foxy. That's been Rob. This has been a review preview show. Thank you, guys, for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, it's in the blood. Peace out.